And uh, welcome back to the Album Blogger. Uh, thanks for watching uh, Blog 53, which is receiving an easy number of views lately. Uh, I'm just charging this guy to see, so that I'm actually hand-holding this phone again. But I just wanted to record again what happens when you're still fixing this place like Marie Kondo. <laughs> so I'm still like, I decided to just record it because might as well. I mean, I don't know, I'll just keep you guys entertained. So I'm gonna be tackling this part. Oh, this is all the uh, bike stuff, mom's shoes. I mean, mom actually bought these two cabinets for her shoes and then literally forgot about it because they ended up just rotting and stuff. When we first bought this place, um, I don't know, the contractor or something. I'm gonna show you something mom's gonna hate you for. <laughs> so all these items, all, <laughs> all these cabinets here are, are like, I don't know, it's designed apparently for shoes, but if it's really meant for shoes, it's meant to be with holes, right? So unfortunately, they all ended up rotting. <laughs> Hi mom, I hope this makes you feel better. <laughs> well, she has astigmatism right now. All the stuff here was hidden in like 2012 or 2009 or something. So they're basically empty shelves. So uh, in, the, in this time of pandemic, I just wanted to use, for example, now that the bike is here, I just wanted this place to be used for like the bikes or some, you know, storage, but as a living room, but we're not so sure yet. I'm gonna show you upstairs how it looks like where I'm gonna put the bike stuff. Hmm, it's kind of blurred. Okay, so this is my famous sister, Roseanne. So you can follow her on Instagram. And this is the space that I'm planning to use as the storage for my brother's bike stuff. It used to look like this, you know, this versus this. So uh, these are all my paintings when I was a kid, uh, just hidden somewhere. And this used to be, again, clear. But since I didn't have enough space to put anything, you know, we had like, we lived for like almost, what, 18 years abroad in different countries, so don't expect the house to look clean <laughs> all the time. So I'm planning to put the stuff there. I'll just show you the living room for a bit. This is the second floor living room, like the one I showed you in vlog 52. So I'm hoping to just make sure that all this stuff is going to be here. Again, the treadmill and stuff it will be Hopefully it'll be there. So this will be like a gym, some sort of. All right, let's go. Yeah, unfortunately I have to have a little break because although I already brought some stuff up here, guess who's waiting for me every time I pass through the main door? It's Mr. Spotty. <laughs> Mr. Spotty is waiting. He thinks I'm walking him even though I already walked him. So this is exactly what Spotty does every day after work. And around this time, he thinks I'm going to walk him. I already took him a bath and he already walked the lap. Mm, say hi. Say hi, say buddy. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna give I'm just gonna walk Spuddy first before I go ahead and clean up this mess. Subscribe and just wait for the 30 seconds uh, commercial. <laughs> Welcome back to the Island Blogger. So you made it this far, and now I'm just gonna show you how the shoes look like here and what's behind door number one. Number one is Spotty's um, stuff. Door number two, uh, my mom likes to keep, you know, suspense for a lot of things. Door number two is nothing. There's like nothing there, technically. So I can all, I could just put all the shoes here. I don't know why mom had to buy that one, so. And then door number three. <laughs> it's a secret toilet, uh, yes. Uh, I just show you. This is the place where uh, people think they have. Uh, 
They think they're just, you know, they're in another place, but in reality, this place is inspired from our state. <laughs> uh, this is inspired from our place in India, where in everything, even the bathroom, was like behind the closet area. So the whole point of this entire thing is that should this place become a bedroom, nice lighting, huh? Uh, you can actually use this place and turn this to a bedroom. And let's see. Door number four is, of course, once stuff which I just showed you during the introduction. This is how it's meant to look like in just a few minutes. But door number five or six, I don't remember. Yeah, this is the stuff that uh, in the year 2008, 2010, this used to be a computer room, hence the reason why all this stuff is here. Okay, and I'll just show you quickly Rosen's room wherein I put CB's, um, my brother's bike stuff. And we have all the CB stuff here. Fortunately, I have mom's. <laughs> Still have her old shoes boxes here. This is literally from like 2015. I'll just show you. Look, this is what my mom does. She puts 2009 of bought an ATC on the Wednesday of the 15th of 6th of October. So, fortunately, we still have boxes. So, this is all meticulously like sorted out. So, if ever my brother needs to get something, he can just literally get stuff per box. And just like I mentioned before, when we used to live abroad, uh, I'll just show you a t-shirt. So this is actually from International Sports Day in the year 1996, wherein, where Mumbai was still called Bombay. To this day, I'm still, it's still called Bombay. So for us, uh, this is just one of the t-shirts that I found that we actually use as a dirt cloth. <laughs> because, you know, I mean, cotton in India is amazing. It lasts so long. That's why it's funny that in the cotton, we have co Indian cotton for t-shirts. I'm telling you, they really last a huge amount of time. This has been with us for such a long time. The reason why it's so long for kids, because underneath is what they would use when they go for swimming. And the swimming in American school, Bombay, the, what's it called? The, the kids would always be wearing their swimsuits underneath and they need to have just a, a long t-shirt just to cover themselves and to be more appropriate when they cross the street from the old house. Uh, old house is old school house to the American consulate. A little trivia from our time in India. And speaking of our time abroad, well, this is from Thailand. Ceramics from Thailand, from Jinny. Uh, these guys are from, of course, from India. This is what you call a dowry chest in which if you are a girl in a f family in India, uh, this is the dowry chest that you would give to your future husband wherein from day one since you were born, you would be stuffing this with all the precious jewels, uh, saris, uh, yeah, the stuff, you know, clothes for the for the girl to be turned over. And this is over 200 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Look at the detail. So just right beside the closet, we have these two silk paintings my mom bought in Bombay. These are my favorite. It just reminds me so much of the colors of India. But the funny one I, I, I do remember from when we were kids are these guys. Uh, these chairs are quite uh, unique. I don't know why, but very 90s looking. Um, I kind of told my best friend Julian Arwani one time that if he does sit here, there's like a fertility chair. <laughs> so if he sits on it, he'll get you know pregnant or something. But anyway, immediately as soon as he sat on it, he got up. And that was when we were in when we met up again in Bangkok because he used to live in Bombay with us for like three years as kids. Another quick story, uh, this is from Bombay, but I think it's like 1940s. I mean, it's really old, but it just got ruined because we kept sitting on it for several years. And since we're still in the top of India, this is all made out of camel bone, I think, camel bone. And my favorite art piece so far is this reversible dresser, which this is all inlaid with camel bone or something. Uh, my mom was given, uh, this was given to my mom as a gift. And the reverse is actually the elephant side, which is pretty as well. And last but not the least is this uh, camphor chest. It's basically, that's when you were back in the um, British occupation of India, the camphor chest was used for, I don't know, doctors. And so apparently this is like over 100 years old or something. So every time you open it, it smells like camphor, like menthol. It smells quite good. Hello, so yeah, so this is the update. 
Um, basically, some of these shoes melted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Anyway, so and I've arranged some of the shoes to make it look pretty. Look. So unfortunately, some of them have molds, and some of them are still okay. But you know, doing this for at the Gathan for a year, folding shoes and stuff, putting shoelaces. This is nothing. I just never seen it disintegrate like this. All right, let's keep it going. So, I'm not too sure if this is satisfying for you guys, but these are the remnants of my mom's shoes. <laughs> uh, it's not my decision to keep shoes or to throw them out. The point is, uh, it's for me to just tidy things up, keep organized, and to keep track of what items are here in the house because I really don't know. Uh, why? Because, well... <laughs> We have some rodent infestation outside, so they may have intruded into the house. So we're just literally looking at to see if there's any places that there may be a danger, a health, uh, health and safety for all of us here. But definitely, I'm more worried about the kitchen. Okay, so I just got plastic back, but it's a little scary because that door just moved. And well, every night, every time I clean this place, there's like that door opens and stuff. So either it's a huge gecko, like one of those big thick ones, or it's like a tiny rat or a big rat, I'm not too sure. But definitely that's the one thing that I am a little bit scared to touch, especially that part of the kitchen. Okay, and now it's my turn. Uh, this is just the shoes from I don't know when was that. This is like literally since the time I was still in the UK. Okay, so you guys are all probably criticizing. You're gonna, oh, you know, because because it's not your shoes, it's not gonna be like uh, no story. There's no story behind it. Etc. Hence, reason why you're hoarding it. But okay, I'll tell you my story then. So these are some of the shoes. At one point, I had like super sharp heels. The, these shoes are um, the first. Shoes that I ran with on a, I think on a, a full marathon. So although this is like super 2012, 2013, oh my God, they're heavy. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, sentimental value. These shoes I've been walking in in the UK. <laughs> These shoes have been in here in 2008, 2006 or something, doing Dance Dance Revolution. And these are these are effing tight shoes when we were in. The Isle of Man. So there you have it. So thanks so much for watching. I do hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, it was all just, um, I know this is just all shoes and a short story, but hope you guys enjoy it. Do subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Go. Go for a walk. Come on. Go. Okay, I'm just gonna go for a walk.